People's Republic of China has a population of over 1.35 billion. It covers approximately 9.6 million square kilometers, and it is the world's second largest country by land area. My mother and I first traveled to the city of Dalian to meet the parents of my foreign exchange student Richie after 31 hours of traveling from the United States. Shanghai Square overlooking the city and port of Dalian was one of my favorite memories of China. It was our first opportunity to people watch for a lengthy period of time and we sat on the high edges of this massive concrete structure that resembled an enormous open book. I began to notice that generally groups of people consisted of a few school friends or young couples, a family of three, but mostly there were smaller, more intimate groups. Everyone seemed so happy. The women were dressed modestly and playfully feminine and much more stylized than casual. We could hear American pop music off in the distance at the carnival, and there was English on most of the signs everywhere in China. The whole scene at Shanghai Square really resembled the California seacoast to me, especially with the fun, sunny, and happy atmosphere. Oh, 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 it's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, hello, hello. Ni hao. Hello. The cities, suburb cities, and suburbs in China are all immaculately clean and landscaped. Highway flyovers shade nature parks and new playgrounds. Grass lawns are manicured. There are an incredible amount of public workers, from street cleaners to gardeners and trash cleanup, who constantly improve outdoor spaces. around 6 or 7 p.m. A lot of people, hundreds of people will be doing some exercise here. Yeah. That's Just really cool. Spare. Yeah. On our second day in Dalian, we headed to the Pebble Beach area and we were able to see the Chairman Mao Museum, the Dalian Wax Museum, and a Trick Art interactive photo exhibit, as well as a Body Worlds exhibit, and several other places at the Pebble Beach area. We finished the day with a meal at the Lawns Family House. It was wonderful to meet Richie's extended family, and they were very gracious hosts. In Beijing, we were able to see the new 2008 Olympic area, the famous bird's nest in the modern national swimming center, the Water Cube. Surprisingly, Beijing is still a developing city, with most of the buildings having been built after the revolution in 1949. Many of the new buildings in the downtown area were built between 2003 and 2010 for the tourists coming to the Olympics. The ancient areas of Beijing, such as the Forbidden City, are 600 to 2,000 years old. Beijing is also famous for food and for the hutongs, or alley neighborhoods. And of course, for the incredible night markets. Especially memorable was the tour of the Forbidden City. There are seven massive walled courtyards leading to the political buildings and the family living spaces for the emperor, his family, and his concubines. There are also the private imperial gardens where tourists can now wander freely. The architecture of the Forbidden City and the historical stories of its inhabitants made this tour a true tourist highlight of our trip. Each 
Tiananmen Square is massive. Our tour guide Jasmine told us that the area can hold over half a million people. The ground is all squares of cut stone and the intersections are blocked for pedestrians who need to go underground to cross streets using the subway walking routes. Tiananmen Square is also the final resting place of General Mao Zedong. It was explained to us that he is submerged in a medicine, which is probably a chemical, in a crystal coffin where he can still be viewed for limited hours. Also in Tiananmen Square is the Chinese White House where the politicians work and also the Museum of History. I really enjoyed people watching in the giant square and in the shopping district of Tiananmen Street, which is a more modern shopping center with a Zara, a KFC, and a Starbucks. <laughs> we were also able to try the famous Beijing roast duck at one of the best restaurants in China. The next day we drove several hours north to see the Great Wall of China. There's something truly magical about the majesty of the mountains in northern China, and they are incredibly breathtaking. They start out as outlines in a hazy sky, and as you leave the vast development zones of city and skyscrapers and head into the farmland of northern China, you become aware of the natural beauty of this country. We flew to Xi'an from Beijing and I was able to capture my mother's reaction to one of the eight wonders of the world. <laughs> we drove one hour from downtown Xi'an to the farmlands, where in the 1970s a farmer drilling for a well discovered a terracotta warrior head. We actually met this farmer and got his autograph. He placed the head in his house and prayed to it for three months for rain, but none came, so he threw it out into his field, disgusted. A visiting government official had heard a rumor of the head and went searching for it, understanding its probable archaeological value. After an initial assessment, the government sent out an archaeological team to excavate, and the three famous pits were found. The local farmers were rewarded with new homes and income as the land became one of the largest open digs in the world. Teams today are still excavating, having only covered about half of the buried territory so far. We were able to see some restorers working to reassemble broken soldiers, horses, and chariots. It was fascinating. We drove to the nearby Huaqing Hot Springs to see where the Emperor Tong and Lady Dian spent time relaxing and living when they were in this area. There was such an interesting story of how they met. Lady Dian was originally married to Tang Sung, but the emperor saw her sing and dance and he took her for his concubine, and they lived happily for many years. Eventually, after a war he lost, the enemy demanded that Tang kill Lady Dian, or they would kill him. So Lady Dian was hung by her own scarf from a tree, aided by a helper by herself. Her story was so tragic. But the grounds, pools, mountain views, elaborate pagoda-style houses here were inspiring.
吃饭的时候都没有这个，我都看都没有。It's a Chinese taco with beef and vegetables inside, and it's fried. It's kind of like a chalupa. It's delicious. It's my favorite thing so far. What's that? What's that? in Hanju, we met up with some of the other students from my school in Florida and Richie's friends, Carl, John, Tom, and Romo, and after lunch we departed for the West Lake area of Hanju. We took a man road boat tour of the lake as a group which gave us beautiful lake views of the greenery, rolling famous tea plant hills, a temple, pagodas, and later the city skyline. <laughs> After our boat ride on West Lake in Hanju, we walked over the incredibly scenic and traditionally landscaped pathways. There were beautiful scenes everywhere we turned. A pagoda amongst a hill of flowers, half moon bridges, a moon gate over a river pebble stone walkway, a pond of koi fish, water birds along the shore, weeping willows hiding gently lapping water, secret paths through rock gardens. It's no wonder that this was the favorite spot of emperors. We also traveled to a famous Buddhist temple. Here is a 600-year-old pillar where the founding monk was buried 1,000 years ago. He was inspired by the Buddhists of India, and there are hundreds of carved Buddhas on the natural caves here. Later that night, we went to see a show directed by Zhang Yimou, the same director of the 2008 Beijing Olympic opening ceremonies. Thank you. 
After having a tea ceremony at the National Tea Museum, we then took the most interesting ride in China so far and drove past the famous farmlands of Hanzhou, known for pearl cultivation, silk, and tea. We drove out to the famous small town of Wuzhen. The water town of Wuzhen is a quaint Venice, Italy style multi-island river town, and we were staying in the refurbished farmhouse style inn with friendly hosts. We explored the walkways, bridges, water views, scenery, locals, tourist shops, and boats by ourselves for most of the evening. Walking in the evening lights of Luzin was one of my fondest memories of China. We shopped at many of the stores, took photos, and ate ice cream before heading back to the inn where our princess netted canopy beds and the adorable wooden cottage style room above the river awaited us. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cute... We then drove to the town of Suzhou, which was our last city before traveling to Shanghai, where we would depart back for the United States. In Suzhou, we explored the famous humble administrator's garden. This is a spectacular inner city walled haven and gardener's paradise. After exploring the garden, we traveled to see a silk factory. While we were there, we saw all the steps of the silk making process, from caring for silkworms, to harvesting the silk thread cocoons, to cocoon inspection through the eight strand threading process and finally to the silk pattern production. On our last full day in China, we traveled about two hours by car to Shanghai, where we walked around in the famous hutongs, which are the shopping alleys, and again, ate ice cream before lunch. Richie went shopping later in the glamorous Xintandi shopping area, and my mom and I walked around and viewed an authentic Shikumin 1920-style Shanghai House Museum with delightful antique artifacts. In the afternoon, we were able to see 360-degree views of the city from atop the Shanghai Pearl Building. We had famous Shanghai dumplings for dinner and had a driving tour of the British-style street called The Bund, and then went to the hotel. In the morning, we hugged Richie goodbye for her return flight to Dalian, and we boarded our flights, first to Seoul and then to Atlanta. I'll take it in, but don't look down. I'm on top of the world. Thank you for watching my trip film. I hope you enjoyed seeing our experience, which was truly the trip of a lifetime.